Okay, so we're going to get started with exercise 204. Uh, and today is fundamentally your first day where you start to learn anything in V-Ray. And like I said on the first day of the semester, I used to save V-Ray until the very end of the semester. And I've found that it's better that you get little bits of it along the way. It seems to be easier to digest. It's not as overwhelming. So um, you will start to see today how many options there are within V-Ray. I will try to keep things as simple as possible uh, as we move forward so that you really understand the options that are important and the options that are not as important. Um, like any really good rendering engine, V-Ray takes a long time to learn and to learn it well and to be able to troubleshoot it well. Um, so I try to break it down into the, the logical steps. Uh, we'll start today kind of understanding basics of materials, um, not so much in the V-Ray setting, so to speak, and the lighting conditions. We'll move to those a little bit later on. Today is about materials themselves and how do we assign materials to objects and how do we work and manipulate materials. Um, so I, I've gone ahead and I've opened up uh, Rhino. So I'm, fundamentally, I need something to apply materials on. So I'm going to take and create a very simple composition of five objects. The size of these objects makes no difference. I just need five objects. I'll use the presets here. I'll start with a box, for example. And let's just go ahead and create a little box, like there. And then maybe I'll create a wall that, that is behind the box. It's a little bit taller. Uh, if I click and hold, I have some other options. Maybe a cylinder would be nice. Our objects could intersect a bit. Let me go ahead and uh, look at shaded mode here. There's a few intersections. Let's move this out just a little bit. Like that. Sometimes intersections are good, right? We can kind of see how things interact with other things. Uh, let's see. Let's do, uh, let's do a cone of some kind here. Like that. And let's do, I don't know. Sure, let's do a donut. All right, something like that. Uh, yeah, that'll work. OK, so I've created a composition of five objects. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want to get kind of a nice view of my five objects. And again, my five objects make no difference what they are. I just need five objects. Uh, and then I want to kind of establish a, a good looking view of my five objects such that I can see all of the individual objects from this particular view. Okay. So in this particular case, I can see all my objects. I think that's a reasonably nice view, something like that. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to save my view. Actually, I'm going slightly out of order here. No, we'll, we'll come back to being in correct order. I skipped, sorry, I apologize. I skipped to step five. Uh, and that is I'm going to establish a named saved view. Uh, incidentally, you'll see, especially in V-Ray, uh, on the handouts, I reference lots of individual little uh, tutorials. So for example, what I'm going to do with the, the saved named view, if we were to go to tutorials and then V-Ray, and the saved view is 5.28, if I keep scrolling down here. Oh, excuse me, it's in Rhino. Sorry. Rhino 5.28. There it is, saved views. And everything that I'm going to, to do is right here in this little write-up. Okay? So when I reference that, reference the website, look up what I'm saying, or reference the book if you have the book with you, et cetera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little triangle. And I'm going to go to set view. And then I'm going to go to named views. Okay. So once I get this little named views dialog box, I can click on the save as icon, little disk. Not that we use floppy disks anymore. And I could name this, you know, my view one or render or whatever. Oh, I shouldn't put any spaces in here. Um, that's for later on. So I'll do my view zero one. It doesn't matter for what we're doing today, but long term it, it will make a difference. OK, so I have my view one. That's nice because you see that instead of saying perspective up here, it now says my view one. Let's say I orbit around and I'm looking at something, and then I want to go back to that view. I can click the little triangle, go to set view, my view one, and I go right back to that view. So I can render the exact same view over and over again. Okay, So it's just a saved view uh, of my rendering. Is it absolutely critical that you have a saved view today? No, but it's something to get in the habit of doing. Um, because you'll ultimately what will happen in V-Ray is you'll, you'll get your settings, 
you'll set up your view the way you want it, you'll render it, and it won't turn out the way you want it. You'll make some changes, you'll render it again, it'll be a little better. You make some changes, you render it again, it'll be a little better. And each time you want the view to be identical so that you don't have to go find that view again. Right? It makes it really easy, especially when you're doing presentation boards and stuff, because you can just drop in the replaced image uh, in InDesign. So, okay, so now we have a saved view. I need a couple of other things in the world of Rhino and V-Ray. And that is that right now there is no ground. So if I were to render these objects, and I'll go ahead and do it. They show up as if they're floating on an infinite black plane, okay, which is somewhat problematic. So I want there to be some ground. So I'm going to do that by installing something called a V-Ray infinite plane. And so in the V-Ray toolbar that we loaded up, there's an icon that looks like a little rectangle kind of in perspective with lines that go off of it. We're going to go ahead and just click that icon, and you'll <laughs> see that V-Ray drops in. Right? Kind of a, a square looking object. Okay? This square looking object, if we were to zoom out and look down on it, just looks like a giant square. The difference between this and drawing a giant square is that this is just a representation of the overall infinite plane. This plane continues off in all directions to infinity or to the horizon in, in the world of V-Ray. So now that we have ground, so to speak, if I went back to my saved view, I'm going to go to set view, my view one. There it is. And I were to render it, we'd see that there is ground down here at the bottom. Okay. Now, I also noticed that my little donut thing here is kind of halfway below the surface of the ground. So I want to move that up. Let me look at it in one of the side views there. That's a little bit easier to see. And I'm going to type move or I'm going to go up to transform, move, select a base point, and I'll push this straight up so that it's up a little bit higher sitting on the surface. Okay. Once again, I can go back to my view, go to set view, my view one, and there I am back in that view. Okay. The next thing that we really need as part of the V-Ray scene is we need a light to be installed in the scene. And we will get to the point where we actually put suns and you know accurate lighting and all that sort of thing. For right now, we just need a temporary little tiny light. And we're going to do that using something called a basic directional light. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is start with a box. So I have a box right here. I'm going to draw a basic cube, something like this. And I'm going to use this as a guide to set up my light. So now that I have the cube there, I'm going to create a directional light. Now this is one of those weird, quirky things about V-Ray is the directional light is actually a hidden button at the end of the light tray. Okay, So go figure why it doesn't show up. But it's, it's right. If you move across the lights, the first one is sun. We get rectangular light. We keep going. Past the end, we get directional light. I don't know why it doesn't show up as a button, but it's not there. Okay, But if you click it, we'll get the directional light. You could also type in directional light if you want. And I'm just going to go from the lower corner here to the upper corner there. So I click at the lower corner, click at the upper corner, and I'm going to get a light that's cast down in this general direction. Okay. After I have that, I can go ahead and get rid of this box that I used as a guide to set it up. And we can see that that light will be floating there. The reason that I use a box is because it's much harder to do a three-dimensional light without some kind of a guide. And so it just makes it easy. You have the box, click the lower corner, click the opposite upper corner, you have a, a directional light that's installed. So if I were to do a quick rendering right now, it's really bright, but I'll let it finish here. All right, well, it's kind of hard to see. We need to have some material, so we'll get to that. So let me go back to my set view, and I'm going to go back to my view one. So I, I fundamentally have a directional light, so there's light in the scene. I have an imp infinite plane underneath my objects, which re represents the ground, and I have five objects. Okay. Right now, everything has a completely generic default material assigned to it. Okay. But before we move into actually assigning materials, I want to introduce you to the, the V-Ray, kind of the main engine in V-Ray. Um, even though we won't be changing a whole lot of options, I want to go through some of the basics. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to either click on this O that looks like a little yellow tag with an O on it, 
or go up to V-Ray options, either way. And this brings up the V-Ray option editor. And there is, this is really everything that's under the hood in the world of V-Ray uh, and where all the options are. And so you pull this up and you say, well, that doesn't look too bad. right? I can manage that. It's just one little box. Okay? Well, the problem is that every one of these little buttons is a drawer with a bunch of options. So if we click, for example, on global switches, that then expands to show us a bunch of options. But you can see rather quickly that if I expanded a bunch of these, suddenly we'd have this really long scroll of all these options. So you can see how many options there really are uh, within V-Ray itself. So let me go ahead and, and minimize these back down. And we're going to start with just the global options. Okay, these are the generic options for the whole scene. Okay, under geometry, we do want displacement on. That's good. The block face, um, the force back face culling is off. That's fine. Most of these defaults are going to be fine. I'm going to point out a few that are critical. Number one, we want our light, we put a light in the scene, so we want to make sure our lights are on. And yes, they are on. Below that, we have an option for something called hidden lights. Okay? If you put a light object on a layer and turn the layer off, the light would be hidden. Okay? In reality, it's a good idea to put lights on layers because you can turn them off by turning the layer off. So you're going to want to leave this unchecked so that all lights that are on layers that are turned off are therefore turned off. Okay? Shadows. We want to make sure that our shadows are on. That's good. Okay? Below that, we have something called show GI only. That would be to eliminate all the artificial lights that we put in a scene. Something for down the road. Uh, sometimes when you're struggling with certain render options and you're not getting good results, this is a way to, to figure out what's wrong. Okay? We, of course, want to render the finer, final image. So when we get to don't render final image, that would be a bad idea to check. Okay? Low thread priority is automatically checked. That's good. Okay? If we come up to the other side and we go to materials, obviously we want our reflections on. That's good. Um, the depth and the transparency cutoffs, etc., we'll leave those as defaults. We do want our maps on. That's good. We want our glossy effects on. That's good. Override materials is something that we will do later on in the semester where we temporarily turn off all the materials and make it just white again. Uh, and you'll see why that's relevant. And we can choose an override color. Okay? So for the most part, all the default options are just fine. I just like to walk through uh, the basic defaults. Okay? A couple other things that I'm going to do. I'll close the global switches. And I'm going to go next to the output little drawer, which is a little bit further down. And under output, I'm going to click on this get view aspect button. And then I'll go ahead and click the L button. That's right here. So get view aspect and then L. What this does is it makes the rendering match what I see on my screen. If I hadn't done that, I'd get a small rendering instead of the wide rendering that I see on my screen. To me, it's a lot easier if we get the exact ratio, and then when we render, we see what we get. It's, it's an easier correspondence. When we do the skyscraper renderings, we will adjust this so that we don't see what is on the screen, but we'll get a much taller rendering. It'll make more sense down the road. But for right now, uh, the, the output there, um, setting it to match is good. All right, so we have that set up. The rest of these options we're not going to get into, except that I do want the background. So right now, if I were to do a render, let me just do one so you can see. The infinite plane ends right here. Everything up above is sky, right? And it's black. So the ground is white. The sky is black. Uh, it's a little bit stark in its contrast. So I'm going to go back to my V-Ray options. And I'm going to go to environment. And so we have the skylight. And then below that, we have the background color. So this is the sky color. And I'm going to change it from black to white. So I'll go ahead and say OK. So both of these are, are now white. All you do is click on the color, that little square that is black. Click on that color, and you make it white. Select white, say OK. OK, so now all of those options are set up for me. And I'm ready to start my renderings. But before I start the render, uh, or actually I could do the first render right now, and it wouldn't turn out like much, okay? because there's no materials assigned to it. Everything's white. So let's start by assigning everything kind of a gray color. So to do that, I'm going to click on the M button, or go to the V-Ray um, menu and select Material Editor. And this brings up the Material Editor. 
So on the left hand side here, this upper uh, gray square with the X in it, that is a preview of a, a material. Right now we have no material, we're not previewing anything, but the preview will show up there. Okay? Below that, we see materials list, and we have scene materials. There's nothing listed here, because there are no materials in the scene yet. Okay? So we have to actually put some materials in. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a basic default gray material. So I'm going to right click on scene materials, and I'm going to say create material standard. This will then be called default material, and lo and behold, the default material color is gray. Okay, so that's good. So now, under scene materials, I have something called default material. If I click this preview button, we get a little preview of a sphere on a black and white checkered background, and it looks like a gray material. Nothing too fancy. Okay, so now I want to apply this default material to these objects. So what I'll do is I'll select the object. Notice that the V-Ray material editor stays open. I'll select the object. I'll come to my default material. I'm going to right click on it and say apply material to selection. Okay. So now this object has the gray material applied to it. If I were to render right now, we'd see that that object is now gray in my rendering. So let's go ahead and select all the materials. So I'll start, I'll hold down Shift, and I'll select all the other materials, or all the other objects. I'll right click on default material and say apply material to selection. And then I'll go ahead and do a render. So I'll click on the R button for render. And now I get a very basic rendering with just the gray objects. Okay. You can actually see that the, the shadow's working. If we change our view a little bit here and we render, see how the shadow's being cast right there from the cylinder, shadow's being cast right there. There's a little bit of reflection. There's a shadow being cast by this right there on the ground. So you see we're getting shadows. Okay? So let me go back to my set view, my view one. I'm going to do one more render. There it is. And once I'm done, I'm going to click the little disk icon for save. It's the single disk. And I'm going to save my first image. So let me go ahead and put it um, into today's folder here. Create a new folder for fall 2016. And this is exercise 204-1. And I'll go ahead and save it. Okay, so that's its most basic format. The next thing is that I want to start and create some materials that have some colors to them. So I'm going to go back to my V-Ray material editor. If you close the V-Ray material editor, you'll have to click on the M button or go to V-Ray and then material editor. And then once again, that'll bring up the V-Ray material editor. And I'm going to create a red material. So I'm going to right click on scene materials just as I did before. I'll go to create material and then standard. And once I have my standard material, I'm going to double click on the material name and change it to be red. Now it says red. And I'm going to come up here. And so when the material is selected, on the right hand side are all the options relating to that material. You kind of see how V-Ray works, right? where it has these options. Likewise, it has the same little drawers that we can expand and, and contract. Okay? So under the diffuse drawer, I have an option for color, which right now is gray. If I click on that color, I can change the color to be red. Okay. Now that color's red. I can click on the preview button, and lo and behold, my material changes from gray to be red. Okay. So let's go ahead and apply this red material to this shape. I'll right click, I'll select the shape, I'll right click on red, and say apply material to selection. Now if I were to render, oops, it's minimized, there we go we'd get that one shape is red and the rest of them are still gray. Okay? So I want five other colors, and I'll create those. Uh, you guys can go through and make any colors you want. Let me go ahead and right click. Let me create material standard. This one will do green. Let me rename it to be green. There's green. Let's apply the green to 
I don't know, let's do it to the cylinder here. Apply material to selection. Right click, create material, standard. Let's see here. Let's do one in pink, why not, right? It's in honor of my daughter, why not? She's five and a half, pink is her favorite color. So we'll say okay, and if we look at it, look at that beautiful pink material, right? So let's apply the little donut to the pink. Let's go apply material to selection, there we go. Let's create another one, let's create material standard, and let's make one of them, I don't know, let's try orange. Let's make the wall and back orange. And I don't think I have a blue material yet, so let's create a new material standard. And we'll call this one blue. Oops. And let's make it blue. And let's apply it to this little cube. All right. So now. I have materials applied to all of these objects. And if I go to render, we're going to get a very colorful setup. I don't really like the pink so much. It's not quite strong enough, so let me make it a little bit darker pink. Uh, let me go back to my V-Ray material editor. Let me go to pink, and I'm going to change the pink to be more, uh, let's try magenta, a little stronger. Okay. We'll go ahead and close it. I'll render again. And now it shows up a little bit stronger as magenta. Okay, So now I have all of these objects with some colors on them. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And this is going to be 204-2. There it is. Okay, So the next piece is we're going to dive into more details. Okay, So we're going to start with transparency. So I'm going to pick two of the materials. So let me go into the V-Ray material editor again. And I'll pick two of the materials. Let's start with, let's do green. Okay? And under the diffuse tab, we have the color we've already done. But on the other side, we have something called transparency. Okay? And once again, it has a color. And the transparency color currently is black. Okay? Black means it's a completely solid object. White means it's a completely transparent object. And gray is somewhere in the middle. So let's take it from being black to being dark gray, and we'll go ahead and say OK. We can preview it, and we can see that now it's a little bit transparent. Let's take the blue material. Uh, I don't know. Let's take the pink material. No, let's do the blue. Let's take the blue material, and this time instead of dark gray, let's do light gray. Say OK. And if we were to preview it, you can see that it's a lot lighter. Okay. So I've made those changes. I don't have to reapply the materials. They've already been assigned. I'm just making changes to the material. And let's go ahead and render again. So I'll click the Render button. And we can see that I can look through the green object to see the wall behind. And the blue object is almost entirely gone. Okay, so in this case, maybe the blue is a little too transparent. Maybe I should go back to a more neutral gray. Let me go back to my material editor. Let's look at blue. And instead of light gray, we'll just pick gray. We can see a little bit more there. And we can render it again. All right. So now we have the transparency assigned. So I'll go ahead and save this again. And this is 204-3. OK, so the next thing that we'll do is we're going to add some reflection to some of the objects. We're going to take them from being matte, where they're not shiny, to being shiny. OK, so we'll go back to my material editor, and let's pick an object. Let's pick the red object, for example, which is the big cone. And we're going to not adjust the diffuse anymore. Right? We are instead going to right click on red, and we're going to go to Create Layer, Reflection. Okay. So once again, I took the, the material itself, I right click, and I say Create Layer Reflection. Okay. So just by right clicking and saying Create Layer Reflection, if I hit Preview, the object turns from being 
matte finish to being shiny. And we see a little reflection of the, the checkerboard pattern just in the preview. Okay, So let's do another. Um, oh, I should point this out. So V-Ray has a habit of freezing up on itself occasionally. And when it freezes up, it makes everything kind of grayed out. And it just did that for me. Generally speaking, if you give it 30 seconds, it'll come back. It's just something that V-Ray does. It's a quirk. Okay. So let me take another object. Let's do the um, let's do the green object here. Okay. And let me go ahead and right click on green, create layer, and I'm going to go into a reflection layer. Okay. This time I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to go right here. See under general it says reflection, and then there's a capital M there. We're going to click on that capital M, and this is going to bring up something. Uh, it's a Fresnel reflection, is the type of reflection. But here listed, there's something called IX, I, excuse me, IOR, or index of refraction. This value varies based on materials. So you could actually do a Google search, for example, and you could say IOR of a diamond. Right? And we could look it up, and we could find out where there's a diamond. Right? There's the range of the reflection of a diamond. So 2.417 to 2.541. Okay? So let's do the high end. Let's do 2.541. We'll come back to our material here. And under IOR, we're going to type in 2. Point, what was it? 507. Okay? And we'll go ahead and say OK. So now this material is going to be much shinier than the red material. If we were to preview it, you can see the white square is much, that's a light there, is much stronger than, say, the red. So we come back here, see how the red is more muted? right? So it's a shinier object. So you can see how if you were trying to create a material, let's say you were trying to create diamonds or car paint or something, you could look up what the index of refraction of that material was, how shiny it should be, and then apply that to the material. So you can see how custom this can start to become. OK, so now we have the reflect, re reflections on two layers. I'm going to go ahead and do another rendering. All right, and so now how we have some shininess. And you can see that we're getting, like, this has a reflection of the little donut in it. But the reflection is distorted because it's curved. So you can start to see how V-Ray is starting to, to interpret those reflections. So let me go ahead and say OK. And let me save this as our step four. And I'll go ahead and click Save. Mm, I'm, I'm rereading my assignment. I say to create reflections on four of the five materials, so do some more. And then I say, change the IOR of three of those four materials. Okay? But you guys can do that. You don't have to watch me do it. Okay? Uh, the, other, the one other thing that we can do is if I go back to my materials and I'm under the reflection rollout here, I can also change the glossiness, the reflection glossiness or the highlight to be down. So let's look at the preview here and let's change the reflection to be 0 0.75. If I were to preview it, see how it blurs? It's more like a, a material that would have a blur to it. So it reflects, but it's not a shiny reflection. Does that kind of make sense? More like a plastic would get this kind of a reflection. Okay? So the point is we can make that adjustment there as well. Okay? And it does walk you through that on uh, step 11. Okay? So if I were to render it now, we'd have a change in that red material. And I'll go ahead and save this one as the very last one. So this would be number five. And say, you do want to make sure you're saving along the way, because I'm going to ask you to post all these as you go through the steps. It's a way of proving that you did all the steps. Okay? So thus far, we've talked about making some tweaks to materials, customizing material. It's a red material. It has some shine to it, right? those kinds of things. You're, you're looking at me saying, yes, this is kind of nice, and yeah, OK, that would be kind of cool. I could create a diamond because I can look up the information or whatever. But the truth is that materials, generally speaking, are more complicated. 
right? They have patterns, they have repetition, they have texture to them, and, and, and so forth. We will get to the point in the class where I teach you to create virtually any material you want based on some basic pieces. But for right now, you may want to apply special materials to your objects. Okay? So there is a, a library of materials that is available on the course website. If you go to the course website, uh, number one, if you go to resources, you can go to the V-Ray materials library. And I have a bunch of material that's been set up for you that you could click uh, and browse. So concrete by popularity, for example, you can see the most popular concretes that are out there based on the number of views that those particular pieces of concrete have gotten. Okay? And you could click on any one of those and say, oh, I kind of like that one. Um, and you could come down here, and you should be able to um, download that particular material. Okay? So the good news is that would take a while. I've already pre-prepared. If you go to resources and we go to downloadable resource packages, right? You'll see under Archie 136 at the bottom, there is download zip archive of V-Ray materials. Okay? If you click on that, it will take you to a Dropbox site. You don't have to uh, sign into Dropbox. You can choose to direct download. You say, no thanks, just continue and download my file. And this will download. It's a 120 megabyte file, so it's a pretty good size file. right? But this contains a big archive of materials to get you started. All right? I already have this archive of materials on my hard drive that's attached to the computer, so I don't really have to wait for this to download. But um, when it's done downloading, you'll need to move it to your hard drive. And you'll also need to extract it from within the, um, the zip file that it's in. Okay, so you have to get it outside of that zip file in order to see it. So I already, um, like I said, I already have that. So let me talk you through how you go importing new materials. Okay? So once again, we open the V-Ray Material Editor. Uh, and instead of right clicking on, and saying create material standard, we're going to instead choose to load material. Okay? So I'll click on load material. I'm going to go to um, my flash drive, which should have my resources in it. There's V-Ray. Let me get to my V-Ray materials. All right, so here we are. So we have a variety of materials that are available for me. I will warn you right now, the immediate temptation is for you to download glass and want to want to use glass. Glass doesn't look good until you have environments. Because part of the reason glass looks the way it does is because glass reflects the sky and the ground and the sun and everything else that's going on in your scene. If I were to drop a piece of glass into this scene right now, there is no sky. It's all white. So the reflections aren't really going to be very attractive. I have no clouds to reflect. So glass is kind of one of those things to avoid for right now. The other materials are perfectly fine. You can use any of them. Uh, and you can experiment with them. So let's start with, uh, let's say, concrete. So I'll open up concrete. I'm going to do a basic concrete here. And I'll double click on the concrete-basic.vizmat. And you'll see that under my scene materials, I now see concrete basic. I could preview to make sure it loads correctly. And I could select an object in my scene, right click, and apply material to selection. And now that object, is, when I render, is going to show up as concrete. So there it is. Okay? It's pretty cool to be able to drop in these materials. The advantage of using pre-made materials is that somebody else has already spent the time to adjust things like the reflection. Right? And the texture and bump maps. And so there's a lot of stuff that's already been done for you. Okay? Let me go ahead and uh, import something else. So let me go ahead and load material. And let's go back to V-Ray materials. Let's go to metal. And let's go ahead and let's load up gold. And I want our basic gold. There it is. If I were to preview it, we'd see, yep, that looks like gold. Okay? So let me go ahead and take one of my objects. And we'll right click and we'll say apply material to selection. And now when we render it, we'd get what looks like a little gold hoop. 
as part of it. Right? So could you create gold from scratch? Absolutely you could. But it's a whole lot easier to be able to just go into the material archive and download it and then drop it into a scene and have it look like real gold. Okay? So that's one of the big things about using these pre-made materials. There are other materials. If we were to right click, say load material, uh, you guys can obviously look around at these materials and see what else is in there. Some of which are building materials like roofing and siding and that sort of thing. Uh, some are, um, you know, there's some weird ones that are out there. There's a wax uh, that's in there. So there's, there's a variety of, of things for you to play around with. Uh, there's various floorings that include tiles and carpets. There's a Carrera marble tile, etc. You get the idea. Okay? So there's a variety of options. You're going to go through, load up five, apply them to your five objects, and then go ahead and render those five objects. You will find in this rendering process that things take longer when you start to apply advanced materials. So this gold hoop that I put in and how it intersects with the transparent blue cube started to get very complicated and took the computer a while to figure out how to render that, right, that particular square. Okay, but it gets there. So when I'm done with this, I'll go ahead and save it. And this is going to be 204-6. And I'll click Save. Okay. The last piece of the puzzle is I want you to open up the walls that you created last class. Okay. You do not have to make any post for last class. We're just calling that a wash. The website was down. We're not doing anything. But I want you to open up that, that set of walls. I want you to apply a material to those walls. Right? I want you to do a quick little rendering, and I want you to post that today as part of your exercise 204. If you post it today, then I'll know that you did it last class. That makes sense? Okay. So you will end up posting a total of seven images today to the course website. If you guys remember back to posting in gallery format where there are a little slideshow, go ahead and do that. That'd be great. The instructions are on the back. If you've never done it before, no big deal. Just get those uh, six. Did I say six? Was it six or seven? Seven images. Just get those seven images up on um, up on the website by the end of class today. Okay. Are there any big questions? No. Okay. I'll help you through any of the individual little challenges that you might have.